Today, we were deemed worthy once again to be present. We are deemed worthy to be present at the sacred Mistamadhyaya, the sacred mystery of the Divine Liturgy. When we are darkened spiritually, we approach the holy things in a casual manner, and we do not do so. The clergy who are inside the sanctuary pray what we call the mystical prayers, the prayers which are not audible for the faithful, but audible only for the clergy, who are praying together with one mess of mind, with one mess of soul, with one mess of heart. And they pray before reading the Holy Gospel. That God would give us worthy to hear the words of the Holy Gospel. That God would shine into our hearts the clear light of the divine knowledge of the Gospel. Unfortunately, amongst the many Protestant religions and so on and so forth, they consider the Gospel a simple book or perhaps a special book, but there is no understanding of how we must understand the teachings of our Lord, not only intellectually, but spiritually. Certainly God has given us intellectual capabilities, and we need to utilize that, and we need to exercise that. But in order for our mind to function properly, it needs to be connected to the heart. In order for our mind and our understanding to be functioning properly, we need to receive illumination. And there are many obstacles to this illumination. One of the obstacles is, of course, our own passions. Oftentimes, we all know, if a person gets passionately angry, a little while later he regrets, oh, I shouldn't have said this, or I shouldn't have said that, or I wasn't thinking clearly, and so on and so forth. This is precisely what happens when we are in the midst of our passions. We are not thinking clearly. But in order for us to receive clarity, we need Christ. We need our Lord. We need illumination. We all have a baptismal garment. And the baptismal garment, just like all of our clothing needs to be washed periodically, continuously. But if we are far away from the light, we cannot see the spots on our garment. We aren't able to clean properly. But when we come closer to the light, we see our own faults. And we start to understand how we are wasting our time worrying about other people's faults when we have so much to clean on our own baptismal garment. So, keeping in mind that we always pray to be deemed worthy to hear the gospel, even as we say the prayer, and account this worthy of a master that with boldness and without condemnation, we may dare to call upon thee, the heavenly God, and his Father, and to say our Father, the prayer of our Father. Once again, the church stresses to us that we cannot be casual about these things and that we need to understand things. The church is helping us to understand things the way we should be understanding things in a spiritual sense. And we pray in the Latin service and that we may be deemed worthy to hear the Holy Gospel. Let us beseech the Lord our God. Once again, we are praying to be deemed worthy to hear the words of the Gospel. Why is this? Because the Lord, the word of the Lord, is implanted in the hearts of those who make room for him in their hearts. This is why he is called the word of God. And St. Isaac the Syrian teaches us that silence is the mystery of the age to come. That means that in the next age, in the eighth day, after the second coming of our Lord, the body and the soul are reunited. The heavenly kingdom is a totally different realm. The human beings will not communicate the way we communicate now, with 
words. It's a mystery. Communication is quite different. And God speaks to us. He speaks to our hearts. If we have made room in our own hearts, when we are listening to the services of the church, sometimes certain words, certain phrases, jump out at us. And we are more receptive than other times. Perhaps it's something that we've been hearing for 20 years or 40 years, and all of a sudden, after 40 years, we make the connection. All of a sudden, the words of our Lord, the words of the Holy Fathers, the words of the services of the Church, start to make sense to us. That is because at that time, the heart is more ready to receive it. We can only receive a certain amount of truth and a certain amount of grace at a time. And so we pray today, as we pray every liturgy, to begin with the Holy Gospel. We heard today concerning the Holy Apostles Peter and Andrew who were called by our Lord. And the subsequent Apostles who were called by our Lord. And we hear and we read in the Holy Gospel that they left their ships and they left their father and they followed Christ. Which we should ask ourselves, how willing are we to leave all things and follow Christ? Why is it that they took such a great chance? They had never met this person before. And they left all things and at his word, they were, it's like as if they were mesmerized by his word, they just followed him. The word of the Lord, as we said, has power. And for those who are able to receive it, we receive power. The grace of the Holy Spirit speaks to us, and that is what happened to the Holy Disciples. But every time we find ourselves in church, our Lord is speaking to us. The Holy Fathers are speaking to us. <clears throat> The monastics, of course, are the ones who are supposed to be following this injunction to the greater degree to totally as the holy disciples, believing all things and following Christ, becoming members of the holy community, and then the holy community takes care of all things. In the prayer which we should be praying, in order for us to receive this word of grace, in order for us to understand these words, the prayer of Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ, and God have mercy on A very powerful prayer. It is a prayer of confession. We confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord, who is our God. And we have a prayer here of repentance, have mercy on forgive you. This puts things into perspective when we think like that. And St. Gregory Palamas had another prayer, which he prayed unceasingly. <clears throat> this prayer was, O Lord, enlighten my darkness. This leaves a great impression. It should leave a great impression on all of us. Because St. Gregory Palamas was enlightened. He was a man of illumination. Yet, because he was enlightened and he had entered into his own heart, he understood the darkness which we have inherited, unfortunately, by the sin of our forefather. And from that time forward, the parasite of sin is in us. You remain, remember Cain and Abel. Right away, after the fall, there was jealousy, there was accusation, there was judgment, and so on and so forth. And there were problems. The parasite of sin entered into mankind. And so St. Gregory Palomar said, come to understand, to a great degree, a man needs to be enlightened and illumined to be able to think things through very carefully. Otherwise, he becomes deceived into believing his own thoughts which is the danger ground. We look towards the Holy Fathers to help us and to enlighten us. And we pray, O Lord, enlighten my darkness. And each of us should ask ourselves, 
what kind of thinking do we have? Is this our thinking? Because we look towards the saints as our examples. So let us try to mend our ways and look towards the saints to receive illumination and enlightenment. And we celebrate illumined men whom we call saints. Yesterday, all of you who are here celebrated the feast of St. John Maximovich, and according to the Tikkun of our monastery, we celebrate it for the whole week. Because we don't want to let go of the joy which the saint passes on to us. Of course, we heard from so many people yesterday how much joy and grace they felt because of the presence of our beloved saint, St. John, who has embraced us and is praying for the church here, the local church in America where he reposed. St. John reposed in 1966, but he left Russia and moved to Serbia and then moved south close to the Greek border to a city called Monastiri or Bitola and he lived there for eight years and he would go continuously to his beloved saint Saint Naum of Oakland who go to the monastery of Saint Naum and Saint Naum is the saint whom we celebrate today it's very significant because of the connection between St. John and St. Naum. St. John's beloved saint was St. Naum of Ocrit, and wherever he went, he carried a little icon of St. Naum in his upper pocket, and he would work miracles during this time, during the stay that he had there. He would pray to St. Naum, who was particularly known for helping people who had uh, problems with their minds, mental issues, of course, everybody, the greater or the lesser degree, has problems with their minds. So he's a good saint to pray to. So for eight years, he would go to the monastery of St. Naum, he would celebrate the divine liturgy there, he would pray at the tomb. For many centuries, many, many faithful would go to the tomb of St. Naum. And people would try to open the grave, but no one was successful. At times, Flames would come out of the grave whenever anyone want, wanted to try to open up the grave. And so no one was able to. But the presence of St. Naomi and the grace of St. Naomi is quite remarkable. And his presence at, at the Holy Monastery, I've been many times to the tomb, to venerate specifically the tomb of St. Naomi and that he is a great wonder worker. So St. John came to love St. Elm, and on the eve of the repose of St. John, when they went to Vespers, St. John put the icon of St. Elm on the Analogia, and the fathers told them, Radhika, uh, the feast of St. Elm is tomorrow, the Vespers service is tomorrow, why are you putting the icon of St. Elm today? He said, no, 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 leave the icon of St. Elm. I want him up today, too. Because he was going to celebrate the next day together with his beloved St. Elm, who took him. And so the last day of his sojourn here on this earth, St. John wanted to honor St. Elm of Oakley, which he, he did by putting his icon out on the Anologion and praying to the saint. And then St. Elm, of course, with great joy, was among the first to see and to accept, to receive St. John Maximovich into the heavenly kingdom on his blessed feast day. These are the people of our holy nation, the Israel, of which we are all a part of. St. John was a missionary just like St. Naum, who preached to all the Slavs. When St. John Maximovich went to the city of Vitola, he served, not only in Slavonic, but he also served in Greek. Because there was a very large local Greek community 
living in the city. Wherever he went, he would try to celebrate the language, uh, celebrate according to the language of the people. And so he served in many, many different languages. He even served in French. And he served in, in English. Let us pray then that these saints, these great lights of our holy church, bring to us also illumination. Let us pray that these saints would help us to receive the joy of our salvation. And let us pray that they restore to us the joy of salvation. And these saints then should be the saints whom we should always pray to. We continue as we said the celebration of St. John Maximovich and the day we celebrate the feast of St. John Maximovich, the great one of the workers. May we have their protection and their intercession so that we will be able one day together with them to glorify our Lord. But now that we find ourselves in the liturgy, remember, and I'm going to stress it, I have to stress it every time, let us be attentive. We're going to hear the fearful words of the Lord, which is spoken by the mouth of the Saladin, but it's not the words of the celebrant, take heed, drink the honor of this is my blood. And we will hear the deacon say, let us stand well, let us stand with fear, with fear, let us attend, so that we will be able, with oneness, to offer the holy oblation of peace. And in the secret prayers, we hear that the angels, the cherubim, the seraphim, are terrified by the greatness of the mystery. They cover their faces with their wings. That's why I say, as I mentioned in the beginning, we cannot in a casual manner come to the things of God. Let us then pray for illumination so that we will be able to glorify Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Trinity, the one in essence, and are divided and remain united into the ages of ages. Amen.